Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Shaba shaba kura ba shende de 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 de. She ti ti ola ba sende de de. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. You're welcome. Shaba kura ba shende ba 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 shende de 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 de. Jesus said. Uh, all those that believe on him shall not perish but live as long as God not exactly like that but like that we shall have eternal life like God has eternal life Praise the Lord. Sense the presence of the Lord right here. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for being with us. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for visiting us this morning in a powerful way, God. And we desire that you will continue moving in our hearts and our minds, our thoughts and our bodies. Move by the power of your Spirit. God, move. We invite you to move. We ask you to continue moving and anointing this place. My faith is increasing as I sit here listening to our brother preach. My faith is increasing in the Spirit of God. I believe the level of the room, the faith in this room is increasing. As, as God moves, thank you, brother, for serving. Thank you, brother, for serving and being faithful and coming. We thank you, the Lord. I did thank him, and we keep thanking him. I'm thanking you, too. Praise the Lord. I've, I have a, a thought in my heart of uh, the, the production the production of God being the vessel of production. We, we, we enjoy eating the fruit. We enjoy eating the fruit of the kingdom. But we also, uh, I think God wants also to do production through us and to cause us to be producers yes. through our life. And in... Matthew chapter 2, chapter 3, Matthew chapter 3, during those days John, the one who immersed people, was proclaiming in the desert in the land of Judea, he said, change your hearts, the kingdom of heaven is very near. And this is the man whom God talked about through the prophet Isaiah, there's a voice crying out in, crying out in the desert, prepare the Lord's road, make his path straight. And Jesus came preaching the gospel of the kingdom. The gospel of the kingdom. In a kingdom there's a king. And Christ is the king of the kingdom. And the gospel of the kingdom is the news of the kingdom. And the kingdom is here. The kingdom is here. And we are going to walk in the kingdom that God has brought. This kingdom will... will this kingdom is here to dwell in our hearts. This kingdom is here to be expressed through our lives. This kingdom is here to invade every area of human life. And we are called to be the kingdom invaders. We're going to invade the nations with the kingdom. And we are kingdom. We're called on kingdom assignments. Every one of us here called on kingdom assignments and we have been given a place to exercise and express the kingdom. Every one of us has a place where we can exercise and express the kingdom of God. Every one of us. Whether it's in our family or whether it's at work or whether it's in the church or whether uh, it may be on the airwaves, it may be in the government, we may be able to express the kingdom anywhere where, where God gives us a sphere of influence. It may be by music. That God gives us this place where we are to express his kingdom. And the, the, 
the things that I'm seeing is in the kingdom producer, uh, Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10. There was a teacher of the law. A man who was well versed in the law. And he understood the word or he was supposed to understand the word of God. And he was trying to test Jesus. So he asked Jesus, teacher, what must I do to get eternal life? And Jesus said to him, what is written in the law? What do you read there? And he said, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength, and with all your mind. Also, you must love your neighbor the same way you love yourself. And Jesus said to him, you have answered correctly. Do this and you will live forever. You will live as long as God. And then he said, he wanted to make himself look good, so he said to Jesus, Who is my neighbor? And Jesus understood what the man meant, so Jesus said, A man was going down the road from Jerusalem to Jericho. And it's a little distance from Jerusalem to Jericho. Jerusalem sits kind of up on a hill, and to go to Jericho, you have to go past Mount Olives, and you go toward the east, toward the Jordan, and down, 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 down toward the Dead Sea. Jericho sits there between Israel and Jordan. And there was a man walking from Jerusalem to Jericho on this road, and he was mobbed by a group of bandits, and he was beaten up, and it said they tore off his clothes and beat him up, and they left him there lying on the ground, and he was almost dead. Some of us know a little bit more what that looks like than some of us others. If you're robbed, it just they come by force, beat you up. Maybe they don't beat you up, but anyway, they beat him up. And he was almost dead. And by chance, a Jewish priest was going down the same road. And when the priest saw the man, he walked on by. And a priest is one who was assigned by God to minister in the temple. And to minister to receive offerings from the people to forgive sins. And he was supposed to be of God. And a chance, um, when the priest saw the man, he walked on by. Next, the Levite came to that spot too, and the Levite saw him, but he also walked on by. The Levites were one of the tribes of Israel that were chosen to be the ones that took care of the temple or took care of the tabernacle back in the day when they had the tabernacle. And then they built a temple, and they took care of the temple. And a Samaritan man was traveling down the same road. And a Samaritan man was one, I think he was a mix between a Jew and a Gentile. And the Samaritans were not accepted by the Jews because they were considered somewhat Gentiles. And the Jews would not eat with the Samaritans. And they wouldn't uh, have them in their community. And they were somewhat the off-scouring or the outcasts of, the God, of God's chosen people. And so here a Samaritan came along and he was traveling down that same road. He came to the place where the man was lying and when he saw the man, he felt sorry for him. And the Samaritan man went to him, poured olive oil and wine on his wounds. Then he bandaged the man's wounds and the Samaritan man had a pack animal. He put the man on it and took him to a lodging place where he took care of him. And the next day the Samaritan man brought out two silver coins and gave them to the person who worked at the lodge the Samaritan man said, take care of this man. If you spend any more money on him than this, I will pay you back when I return. Then Jesus said, which one of these three men do you think was a real neighbor to the one who was hurt by the thieves? And the teacher of the law answered, the one who showed mercy to him. And Jesus said to him, then you go and do the same thing. So this is a merciful work. And a good work, we often, we might often hear this story or hear it referred to. But this is the work that Jesus wants us to do. This is one of the things of the kingdom that we're supposed to carry out. And I know that there are a lot of, a lot of, um, a lot of us here that, that serve. And we serve where God calls us to serve. And, and some of you serve until you are exhausted. God bless you for serving. 
I believe that when we serve with the things that God gives us to serve with and we serve until we're exhausted, God renews our strength and it refreshes us and he continues to fill us up so we can continue doing the things that God wants us to do. And so when we do it out of love, loving God first and loving man also and serving man the way that God wants us to serve and love in that way, uh, I, I believe there's, there are some people here that have been serving and I, I just want to uh, say that God will increase you. God will increase you. There is a, there is a kind of a, uh, like a thought in the churches that I want to come to this church because they have this or this or this or I'm not going to that church because I don't get this. Those are called consumer people, consumer Christians. I go to a church because of what I get from the church. I go to church because how I like the church, how I receive from the church. That's called consumption because I go to consume. And I believe that God has something for us to consume at his table. And I believe the church has something for us to receive. But I would that we get past the consumer idea and the consumption of the things and actually become the producers. Right? Because God wants us to become producers. He wants, to become, he wants us to be stewards and be the servers that he wants us to do. And God comes and... With the kingdom, a seed, with his word, and he puts it in our life. And then there's production. Some will produce 30-fold, some will produce 60-fold, and some will produce 100-fold with that life that, that God gives. And there will be a production coming out of our life. There are some that do not produce. And that's like a plant or a vine or a tree that doesn't produce. And there, I, if you've ever been to Israel and, and see how they make use of their, some of their land and some of their soil. And, and you see the grapevines just lined up on a hill. Uh, lined, uh, just thick. The last time I was there, they showed us a vineyard, and the grapes were just hanging big clusters, just row after row. And then they would have these drip lines to keep the grapes watered. And if you find a vine in there that's not producing, you take it out because it's waste and space. You got to put a vine in there that's going to produce. So the wine gardener goes along and finds the place. And he says, that one's not producing. Let's take him out. Because he's not producing. And then there was a situation where there was one of the laborers that said, wait a minute, hold it. Give me one year to dig around this plant to see if I could get this plant to produce. And if I can't get him to produce after the one year, we'll take him out. And God enlightens that to us. That if... If we are not producing, he gives us that space of grace. I would say that space of time where he will move into our life and he will move on our mind and he will send people and he will send his spirit and he will send events and things to take out the stuff that's dead and remove it and dig around us and see if he can't get the thing to produce. If he can't get it to produce, he says it will be cut off and will cast out in utter darkness and burnt. Because it will have no profit or value to him. There are two places that I believe that are existing forever. Now you could argue maybe about the one place existing forever. But it says in the Bible where the worm dieth not. And my thought of that is where the, 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 the essence of the person doesn't, decay, doesn't go away. When God created man in his own image, I believe he created us eternal beings. That we, are, we have something in us that is eternal existence where we exist eternally. And then there's two places. There's the place that burns with fire where the worm dieth not. And then there's the place that is 
that is absolute joy where there's life in abundance and everything there is life abundance. And it's awesome. And I think it's what, when, when God rejoices over the one that's lost that is found. When the two ladies gave their lives to Jesus because yeah. the six-year-old girl said, Mama. Yeah. What happened? Two that were on the road to destruction were saved and they were brought into the kingdom of life. And they received eternal life. And we rejoice when we see miracles and healings. And they are amazing and I love them. But Jesus said rejoice when you're, that you know that your name is written in the... Let's, let's keep that thing there that you were preaching, right? That thing there is what is the most. I think what, God, what, he, what Jesus was saying is that importance of, importance of value. That that being our names written in the Lamb's Book of Life is of the highest value... That God places on human life. And then. He moves by miracles and healings and. Powerful things of God. That we're going to see. And we're going to keep seeing. I pray for continued increase from this day forth. Of the anointing that is in this room. A continued increase of that. And that whatever would hinder the increase of that anointing would be burned up. Not people, not people, but the things, the hindering spirits will be taken out of the way and there will become a, a uh, army, an army of people, an army of people marching through this season of time, declaring the works of the Lord with mighty uh, power, Signs and wonders following. And in order to do this, we have to recognize that we become stewards of the anointing. Become stewards of the anointings. God is the producer working through producers. The, the origin of the, the anointing doesn't come from us. It comes from God. He is the orig origin. But then he needs people that are willing to produce and to, to, to express that, that anointing. There are three things here that I was, uh, three things. Faith, in order to, to, to continue growing and to do the works of God, we must have faith. Because without faith, we cannot please God. Without faith, we can do nothing in the kingdom. The kingdom that Jesus taught has to do with having faith. Love as number one. He said love is the number one. Love the Lord your God. Love your neighbor as yourself. Number one. Uh, then there is, there is, the, there is the, the activation of faith. It is. What I see is it takes someone that trusts God. When he hears the voice of God. To do the things of God. That's when the supernatural happens. The supernatural doesn't happen except there is faith and except that you're trusting God and except that you actually obey or follow through with the thing that God is showing you to do to, to activate the supernatural, the healing and the miracles of God. Someone has to be obedient. Someone has to follow through. And, and the, the, how do we build faith how do we build faith? We, we can't be so easily shaken by every voice that we hear that comes from the enemy. Uh, or every voice that we hear coming through people. Because oftentimes the enemy speaks to us through people. People that don't know better. Good meaning people can sometimes be a voice of the enemy for us. Peter was a voice of the enemy, was a vessel that the enemy spoke to Jesus through. Jesus was saying, I need to be crucified. And the enemy spoke through Jesus and said, uh, through Peter and said, no, oh, you, you don't have to go to the cross. Don't, don't do that, Jesus. And Jesus said, get you behind me, Satan. And, and Peter was a well-meaning person. Well-meaning person. Often the enemy will speak through people that are well-meaning. They may be our friends. They may be our family. They may be our neighbors. They may be meaning well for us even. Like Peter meant well for Jesus. They meant well. And they may say, oh, I wouldn't do that. 
I, I wouldn't do that. If I was you, I wouldn't do that. But if God calls us to it, then to activate the faith, to activate faith and works. Faith comes from hearing God and believing in, trusting him, and then doing it. That's faith. Faith, when we hear God, we believe God, but we're scared to do it, is not real faith. Because we're scared, we lack the, we lack the trust in God that it will work. So it's not real faith. Real faith comes from hearing God, trusting him. When you hear, we hear God, we trust him, and then faith is activated when we do. And that is when the things begin to shift. There, there is a place where, where uh, we may see people walking in the power of God, supernatural power of God. And we would desire to walk in the supernatural power of God too. And so if we start to outwardly do the things that they are doing, it may or may not work for us. Because I believe that some of the things begin to happen in our private place. Matthew taught, uh, it, Jesus taught in the book of Matthew chapter 6 that if we pray, we go to our prayer closet and pray in private. And in that private place, there God will, um, God will reward us openly in front of everybody. And so when we see people getting rewarded in front of everybody by what they did or what is happening, they get rewarded in front of everybody. If we want to copy what they're doing, we have to do what they're doing in their private place. Not just what they're doing in the public place. So we have to go to that private place and deal with our heart and our mind and our thoughts before God and invest in that private place and then God will reward us openly. If we invest in that place. That is one of the best investors of time. Amen. And if we, if we want more time. Or we want our life to work better. We have to invest in that private place. Because it produces fruit. It becomes. It produces in us a fruit. That will become. Uh, it, it will become fit to eat. It will become enjoyable. Uh, we ate. Of the fruit of the Holy Spirit through the work of our brother this morning. We become that vessel to carry fruit. And if that fruit, is, is, if that fruit isn't sweet or isn't good to eat. Then there's some places that we still need to. God still needs to deal with. And we may still need to go to our prayer closet. And, and deal with that stuff inside ourselves. So that, that's, that fruit becomes sweet. Sweet to eat. I know that there is the, the fruit of a, of a person's life. What I see becomes sweeter as that person endures the fire. It becomes sweeter. Yeah. Have we ever seen people grow where the, the things of their life become more sweeter, become more enjoyable to be with, more enjoyable to receive from, more enjoyable to, it, it, it grows inside a person. And that happens from enduring the fire, pressing into the pressure, and breaking out in the glory. Comes in from dealing with the things that are right in front of us without running from them, but dealing with them instead of running. There are people that... The roots are shallow. And as soon as a storm comes, a challenge, something difficult, they run. They disengage. They cut relationships. And they run. And they never grow deeper roots because they don't go through it. And if they would endure and embrace it and go through it, their roots go deeper. Their fruit becomes sweeter. And their life begins to work even better. So I want to encourage us with this verse uh, about um, let us not grow weary in well-doing because if we continue on in faith, we will, um, how, does it, how does it end? Reap if we faint not. We will reap if we faint not. So let's don't faint when the going gets tough. Let's keep pressing in.